Um, thank you all so much for joining us for redefining fitness at home. Um, thank you for tuning in for the third of our for the second of our three part series hosted with True Sport. If you were with us last week for Brighten Your Mind, Mind and Body at Home, welcome back. Um, if you weren't able to join us, we do have a recording available on the Disabled Sports USA virtual event page. While we're waiting for just a few more folks to log in, we'll go over a few housekeeping items before we start. The first is that if you would like to ask a question or make a comment during this panel, you do have the opportunity to do so. You'll find that feature on the right side of your screen. There's a control panel. You'll find that red arrow, click the red arrow, and then you should see a tab that says questions. And at that point you can submit the question and we'll be able to see it on our end. There will be a question and answer opportunity to interact with our athletes here who we'll introduce shortly. Um, and at that point, we'll be able to address those questions that you're sending to us. And any questions that are not answered, we'll follow up with an email. This, this webinar will also be recorded, so it will be available to you after the live version, and you'll be able to share with your friends and community as well. A real quick plug, I had mentioned the DSUSA virtual events page. This is it. You can find it by going to disabledsportsusa.org. It lists the many virtual events that are happening in our adaptive sports community, whether it's our chapters, our member network, um, DSUSA itself. Some of our partner organizations are working to collaborate to put together some opportunities. They're all available here thanks to our wonderful adaptive sports community. Additionally, a quick plug for our Adapt at Home social media campaign. We're really encouraging everybody to film a quick video of something they're doing to adapt at home and stay happy and healthy and fit and post it on social media, tagging Disabled Sports USA. And we also have True Sport here as well and Noah and Veronica. Really quick, we're just gonna briefly introduce ourselves. I am Kayla Hamaker. I'm a training and education specialist with Disabled Sports USA. Disabled Sports USA is really excited to be able to support our community of athletes at this time of quarantine and helping them to stay safe and active and connected. We're also really excited to be working with True Sport to take a deeper dive into how to redefine these means to achieving these different goals. I'll turn it over to Audrey to introduce herself and tell you a little bit more. So my name is Audrey Shaw and I am the True Sport Education Outreach Lead. Uh, we are super grateful to Disabled Sports USA for the opportunity to participate in this three-part webinar series. Uh, just really quickly, True Sport is an initiative of the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency that aims to create a more positive youth sport experience by empowering young athletes to develop life skills and core values for both on and off the field through sport participation. Uh, we do this by supporting and educating parents and coaches with best practice knowledge from experts in their field. We believe strongly in the power of the athlete voice and are incredibly fortunate to be able to work with Olympic, Paralympic, and Team USA athletes in a wide range of sports who are inherently true sport champions and have incredible stories to share. With that said, we would like to introduce uh, and welcome today's webinar guests, Team USA skeleton athlete Veronica Day and Paralympic snowboarder Noah Elliott. Hey guys. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? Great. Good. Yeah, good day. Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> well, just so everybody knows, uh, Noah is a DSUSA E-Team alumni and has participated in their annual winter event known as Ski Spectacular. And Veronica is a longtime True Sport ambassador and True Sport champion. So to start this off, yeah. I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions just so we can get to know you a little better. So Veronica, I'm going to start with you because I think this is important to cover right from the gate. What in the world is skeleton and how does someone get involved in the sport? That's a great question. <laughs> I ask myself that consistently. Um, so skeleton is like bobsled or luge. I use the exact same track that they do which is a mile long water slide, but instead of water, it's covered in ice. And I travel down the track on basically a large heavy lunch tray uh, on my stomach going face first at 
85 miles an hour. So um, I did not start off in skeleton. I started off in track and field. I did long jump and triple jump in high school and college. And I saw a skeleton on TV in the 2010 Olympics. I was still in school at the time. I thought it looked cool. And noticed that all the athletes that were competing were former track and field athletes. So I wrote up an email to USA Bob Sutton Skeleton and basically sent, uh, sent them my track and field personal best and got recruited from track into skeleton. The first 50 meters of a skeleton run are a sprint. So the faster you go in the beginning, the more of a head start you have actually going down the track. So typically athletes are going to get recruited from any kind of speed or power sport. So track, weightlifting, football, anything along those lines where you have to be fast and explosive, that's going to translate really well to um, the first 50 meters of a skeleton run. So you can't win a race with a fast start, but you can lose a race with a slow one, which is why typically athletes will come from those speed and power sports. Awesome. But yeah, but I well, saw it on TV. I thought it looked cool. So send me an email. It absolutely is. And it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, are there any opportunities for para athletes in skeleton? Yeah. So they, um, we just started doing Paralympic bobsled and skeleton. It hasn't been added into the Paralympic Games yet. But I mean, the first step is like having competitions and then um, there's a chance it could get added in for 2026. So it's on the it's on the short list. It just they need enough participation at those levels. But it's pretty cool. Like some there I've been to races where there'll be like a World Cup Paralympic race going on at the same time as our race. And um, people get really creative with that push start at the beginning, uh, just kind of based upon the disability that you have, which is, it's really cool to watch. Um, the bobsled athletes, they have a, there's no push start at the beginning. The athlete is seated in the bobsled. And then there's basically like a slingshot essentially that starts the, uh, that starts the sleds all at the exact same time, which is pretty cool. Um, and then that one's just based on like, how good are you at driving down the track? So um, it's a mono bob uh, competition, but hopefully it's 2026. Phew, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And then Noah, so yeah. snowboarding is likely a more familiar sport for those joining us today, but I'm curious, what is one thing that makes your experience with snowboarding unique to you? I think something that really is cool about skiing and snowboarding and skeleton is the the freedom of expression that you get from it. And I think that's what's something that really resonates with me is when I'm out on my snowboard, you know, I strap in, I'm missing my whole left leg. So I, I wear a prosthetic leg every day. But what's cool is when I strap into my snowboard, I forget that I'm missing a leg and I'm able to go snowboard and really express myself in the best way I feel like. And so I think that's Probably the biggest thing that resonates with me about snowboarding is just being able to strap in, go out, be myself, have fun, and uh, blow people away when they find out that I'm missing a leg. So it works out pretty cool. Well, and I think it's an interesting combination to have you both on because for Veronica, seeing the sport of skeleton on TV and then creating a wager amongst her college friends is sort of what pushed her in that direction. And you sort of have a similar experience, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I was going through treatment for cancer in the hospital in 2014, and I seen the Sochi Olympics and Paralympics on TV, and that's where I really found my inspiration and decided I was going to become a snowboarder one day. Um, so it, seeing something on TV can really do a lot for you if you take the right steps to move forward. Absolutely. Well, so thinking about, you know, we're kind of in odd times, everybody's sitting in their homes, um, trying to, to keep the world safe. Um, but if this was a normal time, you're out and about doing your normal thing, can you tell us what does a normal in sport and out of sport season look like for both of you? Um, I, I can go. So for me, out of season, um, is actually right now. Uh, our seasons wrap up in March typically, and because then it's starting to get warm and there's no ice on any of the tracks. So typically in April, I am uh, just doing anything outside that I can't do um, in season. So that's a lot of like hiking, anything outdoors. I'm, I live in Colorado. Noah does too. There's, we have amazing access to the outdoors here and it would be a shame if I didn't take advantage of it. So um, typically it's just like anything that I can't do in season. Um, 
that I will I'll try and, and take advantage of that in in April. Um, and then once our season, once our off season training starts, typically that's going to be speed and power exercises. So weightlifting, um, power clean, squats, any kind of explosive uh, type exercises, lots of sprints, anything kind of along those lines. And then the season starts typically in October, October, November, once it gets cold. And I will do, um, uh, that's when I actually start sliding, which is, you know, the fun, I mean, working out is great, but I do really enjoy the sliding component. <laughs> um, so that's when I will uh, do, uh, we typically slide, it depends on the track we're at, but if we're sliding in the morning, then I'll take two or three runs each day and then come back to the training center and do the training center in Lake Placid and then do a lot of um, the same exercises that I was doing over the summer just to keep my speed and power uh, hot up so that I can still push the sled fast. But that's typically kind of the difference between indoor um, or in, a, in season and out of season. Well, I think it's interesting for your sport. Um, can you remind me the amount of time you get in actually practicing sport specific movement? So the actual sliding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's basically two minutes a day. So 60 seconds a run. Um, and that's it. So sometimes we'll get three runs. Uh, very rarely would I get four runs or honestly, what I, I don't really want to take four runs. Your neck gets really tired. And so um, the more runs you take, the more tired your neck gets, and then the more your face drags on the ice, and that's just not fun for anyone. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so typically two runs a day, which is um, uh, not a lot. So we have to do a lot of off-ice uh, preparation to make the most of those two runs, and that could be visualization. It could be um, sled prep preparation, anything kind of along those lines that is just going to help me take advantage of those two minutes each day. I love it. Yeah, I think uh, people take for granted that visualization part sometimes. So really great to hear that you're, you're utilizing it. Uh, Noah, what about you? In season, out of season, what does that look like? Yeah, in season is kind of kind of crazy for me uh, when, when the mountains are open and snows everywhere it's racing to get to the hill first every single day I wake up um, <laughs> and so I get to I get to the hill and I go out and do training I run through personal drills that I've worked on with our team and you know I live here in, in Colorado and so where I live you know our team's kind of split up and so I when I go to train by myself uh, when I'm home I'm that's what I'm doing I'm training by myself so I, I have to recreate and run through drills myself that we've done when we're out at world cups and training so that's stuff that i do when i'm on snow at home and then also i'm chasing the free ride days and when it snows a lot and i get to go get a pow day that's always good out of season is um right now i would actually still be able to snowboard if the virus wasn't going on so unfortunately not snowboarding anymore i i hiked a few mountains um last week and the week before so i could snowboard down um because there's still snow on them but mo most of my summer stuff is gym work as well as like skateboarding and cross training because skateboarding translates very well over to snowboarding. Awesome. Yeah. And then um, for both of you, before we kind of push this thing along out of the intro piece, I'm just curious, uh, who's been your biggest motivation or partner when it comes to staying accountable to your home workouts? Veronica? Um. My dogs, because they'll go crazy if they don't go outside. Does that count? That totally counts. <laughs> yeah, like they're very, they gotta, they gotta get outside. They gotta do something. So it like forces me into the backyard to like do, do a workout, to do something so that like they're interested and that they're, they're otherwise like we'd all go crazy. So my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah uh, same kind of similar for me I don't have dogs or anything but I feel like I'm going crazy a lot of times so I'm like I have to do something and so motivation for me is really to stay sane and to be healthier and so working out is involved in that and plus I know I need to continue to work out to stay on top of things um, so and shout out to our strength and conditioning coaches um, we, we get those on the snowboard and ski team I'm not sure I'm sure Veronica gets one too um, but Shout out to the strength and conditioning coaches for always being like, go work out. 
<laughs> period. Period. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, amazing. So look, we're thrilled to have you both be able to join us today to share your experience with redefining fitness at home during quarantine time. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we're excited. The second, Audrey, thank you both. And Veronica, I can absolutely relate on the dog thing. My dog has a lot of energy and definitely keeps me getting outside very often. Um, and Noah also relate on just having that extra person to push you and motivate you to, to get working is awesome. So great to hear. Thank you for sharing a bit more about your day today. Now we're gonna turn it to the audience. We'd like to hear from you guys. What is your favorite type of workout? In just a minute, you're gonna see a poll appear on your screen. And if you could fill out the survey for us, we'll take a look at what everybody's involved in. We'll give it about 10 more seconds here. All right, it looks like we got a few more coming in. Awesome, thank you guys. So it looks like we have a little bit of everything. It seems like cardio workouts are um, pretty popular, self body weight exercises as well, and then pretty even between high intensity interval training and workouts using equipment. So we'll definitely keep these in mind as we go into the Q&A portion, just so we can address each of these different workouts. Thank you all for your participation. All right, so at this point, we're gonna turn it back over to the athletes. I have uh, a few more questions for both of you, and then we'll go ahead and open it up to the listeners to ask some questions as well. So for both of you, uh, knowing sort of where we're sitting with that pole and that most people are out getting some sort of cardio exercise in there, um, what does fitness at home to mean to you and your overall training? Do you, do you want to go first, Noah? Oh, sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh, bad because I went first last time. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Uh, so no, no, no. At home fitness, what it means to me, right? What, yeah, what, what does fitness at home mean to you? Fitness at home. I think fitness at home is something everybody should participate in because, one, it's, it's keeping your body as healthy as you can possibly keep it in the easiest way. And I think that's important, you know. Um, after going through cancer myself and um, realizing the severity of how important good health is, I think to be able to stay on top of that and maintain that, doing at-home workouts is a great way to do that. And so I think it's very important and it means a lot to me. How about for you, Veronica? Um, for originally, I would say that working out at home was a convenience thing. I mean, as athletes, like Noah and I are, constantly on the move and so being able to just like get a little bit of an extra workout in um, at home so I didn't have to go to the gym or something like that I think that was kind of the original intent but now with um, uh, the virus going around it's more to keep my sanity to be honest with you um, so I and because I'm kind of in my off season right now I've been doing other stuff that I wouldn't typically be doing um, which includes cardio. I saw that that was the highest <laughs> uh, highest percentage. I am not a cardio athlete at all. I run for five seconds and get on my sled. So um, uh, this has like this time I've been using to kind of like mix in stuff that I'm not necessarily as good at, but I'm still going to get a workout in just to be like a little bit more well-rounded as an athlete. Um, I think in general, uh, we kind of, we're trying to like maximize our strength. And so by doing that, we're kind of leading off certain things that wouldn't necessarily be beneficial for our sport, but that's not necessarily, um, you're, you're not well-rounded that way. So I, I like this, this summer, uh, this uh, off season time to really work on, work on some of my weaknesses that I wouldn't get to work on in the, uh, in the in season. 
Right. So knowing that you're sort of striving to improve on some of the, the weaker areas and without losing touch with some of the, the focus areas, what has been your favorite exercise movement to do while you've been home, Veronica? Um, I think I've been I've been doing a lot more cardio. I went I ran four miles on Monday and was like, who Ooh. am I? <laughs> um, uh, it was very slow, but so it was, it was, I felt accomplished at the end of it because it's not something that I typically do. Um, I also have a garage and so I've been, basically I open up the garage and then I've been doing kind of a hit workout type thing where I'll like run around the block and then do some strength exercises in the garage and just do circuits of that. And I just kind of mix it up day to day so that I'm, um, the running keeps my heart rate elevated uh, during the strength exercises. Um, and I just, again, I feel like I accomplished something at the end of that. That's awesome. And then Noah, um, living where you live, there's a lot of outdoor activities available to you, even still. Um, so I'm curious, what outdoor activities have you been participating in, knowing that social distancing is also important to maintain? So thankfully, you know, I live in, a, in an amazing place now where the back country is literally right outside of my door. Um, I, I live way up in the mountains in Colorado. And so I'm able to drive 40 minutes and I'm able to actually drive 15 minutes and be away from everyone. But um, I've been driving about 45 minutes to an hour out north of here and to the back country. And I've been split boarding. And I'm not sure if you guys know what split boarding is, but it's pretty much a snowboard that splits in half and then you flip them over. And then you have two uh, skis that you put skins on that you're able to hike up a mountain. And then when you get to the top, you take the skins off and then put it back together and then you snowboard down. And so that's something really awesome that I've been doing um, and being involved with being able to stay outside and still keep my social distancing. That sounds crazy. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's cool. Yeah, epic. We should go sometime. It's cool. All right. <laughs> Well, so last week we had Tyler Carter, who is a Paralympic Alpine skier on, and he told us that he has been bench pressing his sofa. I don't know how. I'm not sure about the logistics, nor do I recommend it to people at home, but that got me thinking and curious. What is the oddest object that you've used to complete a workout so far, both of you? A drill? <laughs> like... <laughs> like drilling into a wall I needed like a very small amount of weight like two pounds to add like just a little bit of resistance and so I walk I have very small hands so it was like walking around the house looking for something that was like had a little bit of weight to it but I could also hold in one hand and I settled on um settled on a drill a piece of mallet um, <laughs> yeah get very creative <laughs> Nice. So the toolbox is getting used. Great. Yes, the toolbox is getting used. Not for its original purpose. Right. But it's getting used. <laughs> what about you, Noah? Oddest object. Yeah, the well, the I mentioned it, the craziest thing I've probably done was watermelon squats. You know, that's <laughs> that's probably the goofiest thing, but it works. You know, you get a little extra weight and it's all good. Um, but I have a few different things around here. I got this awesome stuffed Yoda. Um, you know, that gives you like one or two pounds that you can mess around with. Uh, I got all kinds of things that I've been doing. Nice. Well, in the watermelon squats, you got nutrition yep. and you got your exercise. Exactly. And that's why I do it. <laughs> that's awesome. And uh, we may get a little preview of something similar to that later. We'll see. Um, so Veronica, you'd mentioned earlier, skeleton athletes already have an extremely limited time to practice their runs on an actual track during a normal season let alone getting to a track now with quarantine happening and the fact that it's warming up anyways. So I'm wondering, how do you stay motivated to keep moving and putting in the work, knowing that the amount of time between getting to actually practice your runs can be so long? Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's more about getting into a routine. In season, it's about getting into a routine. So I, I, I'm not kind of be differing too much on a day to day um, what what that looks like, and that that kind of helps me. I, I'm not going to say that helps me stay motivated, but it definitely helps helps me stay on track so that I have a plan going forward with 
um, what I'm doing and thereby staying motivated because I'm doing everything that I need to be doing. Um, and then I, I think also it's just sliding is fun. Like I just, I like sliding. It's, it's a blast. And so it's really easy to stay motivated when you're doing something that you actually enjoy doing and you don't loathe every single day. So um, I'm really lucky that I, I, you know, found something that I'm good at, but I also think is a blast. So that's um, the probably the easiest way to stay motivated. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both for sharing so much about what you're doing at home. Um, Audrey, I think as we're coming up on time, if we're able to transition to the live yeah. Q&A, that would be great. Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so we have a question and this uh, we will address here shortly, but we were asked, what are watermelons what? So I'm going to keep that one to the to back end because we're going to give you a little preview of what that is. Thanks, Noah. Uh -huh. um, one question came in, it said, if you could give one piece of advice for athletes to stay positive right now, what would it be? Veronica, do you want to answer it first or do you? Uh, no, go ahead. So if I could give any advice to some athletes who are trying to stay positive in this town in this time is, you know, you leading up to this point, you probably had a lot of time, obviously, depending on what sport you do, um, but a lot of time in the field or training for that. So I think right now is a good time to be able to focus on the mental side of things and focus on just simple things that you want to be do better or be better at as a person and as an athlete. And now's a good time to think about those. And once you re recognize and realize what those are, then you can set new goals for that. When you get more time to be out in the field again, you're able to go and conquer more so than you could have if you were just sitting around doing nothing during this time. So stay positive, be stoked, make goals, do cool things. <laughs> I love it. Veronica, how about you? Um, kind of just going off of that, like take this as an opportunity to look at what you're doing through a different lens. I mean, this is, this is not forever. I know it feels like, you know, we've been this, you know, in, in this, uh, state forever, but it's not going to last forever. And, um, there are a lot of opportunities that, that we have to, um, be productive in areas that like maybe we didn't think uh we could be so just take advantage of the time to look at uh, your situation through a different lens i think yeah i love that and i think that hearing that always makes me go back to the idea right that social distancing is not physical or is only physical distancing it doesn't mean we have to stop socializing right so one of the the comments that came through that i actually think you know, well, it's got a little bit of comedy at the end of it, but it's important to address is someone had said, my favorite type of workout is usually group fitness, womp womp. But I think what's important from what you just said is that, you know, change your perspective on your lens, figure out sort of what your, your unit is and how you can still access some of that. Have either of you been doing some of the Zoom workout stuff with friends or any of that? I, I haven't done a Z workout, no. Uh, I have played some games with, you know, friends that I haven't talked to or haven't seen in a group. I think, like, Noah, and I'm sure Noah this is the same for you, but, like, we have friends from all over. Like, we're, 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 we travel a lot. We've got international friends. And so it's the only time that we can really see those people all together at once is in season. And so... I've been using this as an advantage to um, just kind of reconnect with folks that I don't necessarily see on on a day to day basis. Awesome. And then question for Noah. Yes. Uh, they said loved your recent hashtag adapt at home video on Instagram. <laughs> Wondering if you're thinking about getting into skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see. Uh, it sounds like Bob's adaptive Paralympic bobsled is coming up. So maybe I get recruited. Maybe I'll give it a shot. <laughs> That's awesome. Do it. Uh, you have a convert, Veronica. 
<laughs> so um, another question for Noah is, can you invite your strength and conditioning coach to lead a hashtag adapt at home live stream workout for them? I probably could. That's, they're giving you new ideas. <laughs> they're giving me new ideas, and I like it. I, I really like that. That's an interesting thought. I probably could. I know um, my strength and conditioning coach is going live tomorrow with one of our international PTs who work with our team. Um, and so they're going to be going over a few different things to do at home, um, which would be cool. So maybe, maybe I can talk to her. <laughs> there you go. You heard it straight from Noah. Uh, Veronica, unrelated to anything workout specifically, although you have used them in or attempted to use them in your workouts, what kind of dogs do you have? And are they tired of being at home yet? Or do they love you being there? Um, I have two dogs. Um, I'm glad we're asking the important questions. And I mean that very seriously. <laughs> um, I have two dogs. I've got uh, Jindo, which is like a Shiba Inu, but Korean and 50 pounds instead of 25 pounds um he hates everyone except for me um and then i have a belgian malinois and she's the one that needs the exercise if anyone's familiar with mouths they're um they're kind of a handful so uh she um she's basically she acts like a puppy and um uh yeah i just got her in november she's a rescue from the Korean meat trade. So someone was trying to eat her, which is really sad. So I'm glad I got to rescue her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that you have them. I have been fortunate yeah. to meet both of them and they're super fluffy and super friendly. So. <laughs> <laughs> Kuma just um, looks at you. It's okay. well, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll accept what Kuma will give me. Um, we are being asked, do you have any favorite YouTube workouts? I, uh, because I have a strength and conditioning coach and because we, we do so much there, I don't really go to YouTube to watch workouts. I go to YouTube for a lot of other stuff, um, like skateboarding, surfing videos, like all kinds of different things that I can use to kind of be a visual, visual learner or visual reference for sports that I like. But I, I don't actually um, watch YouTube workout videos. Uh, I'm not sure, Veronica, have you ever turned to YouTube for some videos? I I use YouTube for yoga um, and just because if I, I, I need, I like having the, you know, guidance for, for yoga, but um, usually I'm just looking up like yoga for hamstring stretching exercise, like that kind of thing. Um, I, I follow a lot of other athletes and a lot of other athletes um, sometimes will especially now they're posting exercises that they're doing. And so I typically will bookmark those exercises so that if I'm kind of in a rut and I can't think of, you know, an exercise that I want to do um, on like a casual workout day, I have uh, a bookmark on Instagram um, of just cool body weight exercises um, or uh, easy, easy to like home workout exercises. Uh, and I think I have better luck on Instagram than I do on YouTube. Although, like Noah, I do spend a lot of time on on uh, YouTube, but it's it's more for um, uh, YouTube University cutting people's hair and <laughs> stuff like that. So nice. yeah, <laughs> very nice. Well, we're gonna go ahead and stop here with the questions. Go ahead and keep sending them in. We'll be able to answer some of those. Uh, later on from our athletes, but I want to thank everybody for sending in all your questions. They were all really great. Um, and we know everyone is having a really unique experience while in quarantine. And we hope through the conversation, you've been inspired to continue redefining what fitness from home means to you and to keep your bodies and your minds moving. So now we have something for you guys that is very exciting from both Veronica and Noah. And I'll let Veronica take it over. Um, so Noah and I came up with a workout yesterday for you guys. Um, we've got uh, just a warm up, which is very important. Do a warm up before you go into any workout. Um, a workout and just like a quick little cool down. And uh, for our warm up, just five minutes of running. I mean, you guys can run around your block. You can um, 
you, you could run in place, but I think running around your block would probably be more, more entertaining. Um, right. And then a bunch of dynamic movements. And Noah and I do these dynamic movements to get uh, warmed up for whatever kind of workout is really coming our way. But um, they're, they're a good addition to just doing some cardio. I think the cardio really like gets the blood moving. But the dynamic movements, the high knees, butt kicks, lunge walks, anything along those lines, that's really going to kind of uh, uh, narrow your focus on, uh, okay, my, uh, my hips, my hamstrings, my upper back, whatever it is, um, to get them uh, kind of warmed up. And then uh, we both have like a lacrosse ball or um, softball. You could use whatever you want to kind of get into all those nooks and crannies that really like cause issues. And for me, that's going to be my SI joint, which is um, at the bottom of uh, my back that always feels tight. So I just like will lay on the ground with a lacrosse ball underneath it, kind of like digging into that SI joint. I know Noah does a lot with his hips. Um, do, you, do you have anything to add on for the warm up section? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that, I think you covered it. Um, and, and, and yeah, it's really important to try to get some of the spots that are going to be really sore and you'll find out which spots they are pretty quickly. So it's definitely <laughs> good to work on those and make sure they're nice and loose for your workout. Yeah. And I like, I like just setting a timer that says um, like, okay, I'm going to do these dynamic movements for 10 minutes. I'm just like, I'm not going to stop moving and I'm just going to keep doing them for 10 minutes. And then at the end of that kind of reassess how I feel uh, based upon what's still sore and what's, what's, uh, or what's still tight and, and what's, uh, what's ready to go. And then for the workout section, we, I, I mean, we've been all about the circuit workouts recently. So, yeah. um, we've got, uh, and you guys can change the numbers on this however you want. Like the beauty of like hit workouts and, um, and circuit workouts is that you can make it as hard or as easy. It's totally scalable uh, and do whatever works for you and whatever you kind of feel like. So we've got inchworm push-ups, watermelon squats, lateral arm raises, dead bugs, forearm plank, all sorts of things. So I think Noah is going to demo the watermelon squat with something. <laughs> yeah, so I ate my watermelon already, guys. So we're out of luck on the watermelon squats, but I have something else that I can use really quick. There's my surfboard on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Skateboard, right? Pretty much anything and everything you can grab that has a little bit of weight to it. This is the closest thing to me, so I'm just gonna use this. But you just get down and start doing your squats. But what's cool is when it's a watermelon, you go down, you can take a bite, come back up, go down, take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> Works out great. And if I can pop in, the neat thing about some of these exercises is that they're very adaptable. So what Noah just did, you can also do from a seated position. You can modify the weight depending on what you're looking for. Um, there's kind of a wide variety of ways to do those same exercises depending on what you're able to do. And then and Veronica. Then, oh yeah. So like <laughs> Noah, I'm also out of milk. So um, <laughs> we put that in there because we thought it'd be like the most ubiquitous that you guys probably had it. So I have um, coolant <laughs> <laughs> and fluid for your um, for your car. So these are different weights. This one's heavier than this one. But basically, I'm just going to. You can do a ton of stuff with this. So I would think of it as like a dumbbell. So you could do lateral arm raises like this, which is what I put down there. You could do bicep curls. Hey. Felt like you could do push press. You could do whatever you wanted with this, but find something with some weight to it. Um, and there's like, don't be, be creative. There's no reason that you, you have to use milk. Although, I mean, assuming there's some at the grocery store, you can obviously use that, but you're going to be, you're going to be drinking it so it'll get lighter throughout the week. Um, but yeah, so I just ended up using a bunch of stuff that, you know, is in our, in our garage that had weight to it. And then uh, I'll adjust my workout kind of as needed. Nice. 
Well, thank you both for putting this together. Um, I think the last little bit is just making sure everybody takes time to get a cool down. It's super important to make sure your body is coming down from having an elevated heart rate, letting your muscles recover a little bit. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to try this. Thanks guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Noah and Veronica. And just to follow up, both Noah and Veronica will be posting a video on their social media platforms um, with a brief demonstration so you're able to engage with them beyond just this session. So real quick, as Noah and Veronica mentioned, it's really important to stay active, get crafty with what that means, stay safe and stay connected with your community, your coaches, your fellow athletes, your family and friends. Up here are uh, just a... Oh, go oh, ahead, Audrey. Uh, we just wanted to share some additional resources. Um, so these are more resources you can get involved in, information about wellness, locating your local DSUSA chapter, all of those good things. Um, so go ahead and check those links out. And thank you all again for joining us today. If you enjoyed this session, feel free to tune in to next week's session on maintaining a healthy balance at home. Again, we also encourage you to uh, to engage with that Adapt at Home campaign and to tag Disabled Sports USA, True, Speed, True Sport, our athletes that are involved here. Thank you again to Audrey for joining us, to Noah and Veronica for joining us in this super exciting session. It was awesome to learn what you're working on at home. Um, again, and we'll be, oh, go ahead, Audrey. Noah and Veronica, just so folks can find you on Instagram, what are your handles? Yeah, so my handle is my last name, Elliot, um, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, underscore Cindy, S-E-N-D-Y. Awesome. And uh, mine is Veriosa, V-E-R-I-O-S-A. Anyone watch Mad Max Fury Road, you know who Furiosa is. So <laughs> that's why I did that. But yeah, she's really cool. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you both. And we will also share all that information in a follow-up email so that you have it easily accessible. Um, this webinar again has been recorded, so you'll be able to refer back to it, share it with your community. Thank you again to everybody who joined us and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks guys. Yeah.